Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I want to talk about the factors that will cause you to leave the safe lane as a safe laner. Basically the purpose of today's video is to go over the concept of like sort of the dead lane but more so like what do you need to look at when it comes to matchups, how the game's progressing, your item timings. These are the things you need to look at to determine whether or not you should leave your lane or whether or not you should rotate mid or top. I know this is a very common question that honestly isn't answered. I, don't, I honestly don't know if there's a single video on this. Um, of course, at certain points of time, I've talked about this in Guess the Rank and various videos, but I wanted to make a full dedicated video to it, so let's do that. By the way guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. Okay, so for a little bit of context for the game we're going to be looking at here today, I'm playing Medusa. I'm against a Earth Spirit, Darkseer, Nyx Assassin, Monkey King, Ember Spirit. I'm currently top net worth in the game by a fair margin, and I absolutely dumpstered this Darkseer with the help of my Bane. You can see my man is having a very bad game. He's level four and a half. I am level six and a half, almost six and three fourths. So right then and there, okay, this is the first point of the video. If you win your lane this hard, unless you really have to, Okay, let's say you're playing Terrorblade and the enemy team has a Storm Spirit and you know for a fact he's going to gank you. Right? Maybe you saw him get a regen or an arcane. That is only the, like, a situation like that is the only time you should leave the lane this early when you are this far ahead. Because otherwise, what ends up happening in, in most pubs is like, let's say, okay, let's say I'm playing Medusa, okay? The average carry player, what they do wrong, and the reason why they get stuck in their bracket when it comes to this, you know, aspect of the game is they just lead the lane. They're like, yeah, Medusa, I jungle. No, no. Dota is a twofold game. Half of it is getting your own farm and half of it is shutting down their farm, okay? If you have the opportunity to do both at the same time, it is always going to be better than just hitting a bunch of neutral camps, unless it's like quad stacks. But let's be real, you're not getting quad stacks in your pubs, all right? This isn't TI. And so instead, look at the value I get. I, I come from out of vision, I snake this guy, and I'm gonna look to bully him out of lane. And you can imagine, if I'm a Sven, and you know, I'm two levels ahead, I could probably do the same thing with God Strength. If I'm a Slark, I could of course do that. If I'm a Jug, I could do that. The You know, the options go on and on. There are some heroes that naturally don't do that as well. For instance, something like Naga, jungles much faster than she pressures for the most part. TB in a lot of scenarios is the same way, but even then those heroes have kill threat if they get this far ahead. Now, the second thing is getting far behind. Honestly, my advice if you're this far behind is to just strictly leave the lane unless they leave, okay? In a lot of lower games, you could be two levels behind and what people make the mistake of doing is instantly leaving the lane. They'll TP top instead of just jungling a little bit. The other, the off laner will leave and then they could have laned longer and yet they're gone. And that's also a mistake. And now, even though this clip that I'm showing you here is the extreme <laughs> as I go and solo kill the darks here, it still should go to show that what would most players do here? They would shove in the lane, say, yep, I'm playing Medusa. I don't want to dive the tower. I don't even want to pressure the tower. I, I, I hear in all of speeds videos, yeah, no, I shouldn't really pressure towers. I should just farm. And usually that's the case. But in this case, I'm so far ahead that that would absolutely be a mistake. I also know that Ember Spirit's dead. And the other heroes on the enemy team just don't really gank me that well. Earth Spirit is mediocre at best when I'm this far ahead. You can notice I'm holding my skill point. I'm considering taking my Q if I'm in a jungle. And if I want to play aggressive, like I am, then I will take my Stone Gaze. I will give myself the opportunity to pop Stone Gaze if I happen to get multi-man ganked, and then I'll be completely fine. But yes, am I able to solo kill this guy and make a buyback? <laughs> yes, I am. But the big point here, regardless of him buying back, is it, it's not that you have to get kills, right? The, the reason you would stay in the lane is not even just to get kills, it's just to bully them off the wave a little bit. Get some pressure in, harass them a little bit, prevent them from rotating, you know, force some resources. You notice I'm not like strictly focused on bullying them out of lane. In fact, right here, this is a kind of a cool play that you guys should do. So I, ha I shoved in this 22 wave early, right? So 22 wave shoved in. This is the seven minute wave that spawned. I know the next wave doesn't spawn for another five seconds. Even when it does spawn, it's gonna take about 20 to 30 seconds 
uh, to get here, and therefore I can go for a side pull. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to static this wave back. It's going to, if anyone TPs into farm it, it's just not going to be there for them. And yes, I end up farming this camp anyway, uh, but I do it slowly, purely just to continue to shut down the offlane, giving them no option to play the lane. And you could imagine th th this is how you create net worth gaps, right? This is how you create extreme net worth gaps. And that's why when I tell people, I'm like, guys, Arteezy, or even myself, if I played in a 2 3 KMMR pub and I play Medusa, nine times out of 10, I'm going to win the game. I'm going to have like a 90, 90 to 95% win rate in, in the 2K bracket as Medusa. I just am. You know, the games I'm going to lose is when people literally are just giving up, right? And the reason for that is, is almost every single game, I'm going to have a 2 to 3K lead coming out of the landing stage. If you want to win your games, guys, consistently, you have to learn how to do this, which is not the purpose of today's video. You should watch some landing stage guys to do that. But I'm here to show you that you should also put a priority on hitting side poles and then continuing to pressure the lane. Medusa is also very good at this. Understand that this hero is naturally good at staying in the lane because she's hard to gank as well. Okay, so the next factor I want to talk about when it comes to getting ganked, whether or not you're going to get ganked, is matchups, okay? This is where things start to get really advanced. As I, I'm going to play a clip where I solo kill Darks here while I talk about it. <laughs> uh, but in terms of the matchups of this lane, what do I need to note, okay? The first thing I need to note is I have an SF against an Ember Spirit. Odds are, if SF is doing well, or if the matchup goes as it's supposed to, SF will do very well against Ember. That means Ember is going to have to play recovery, Ember is not going to have good timings, and as a result, Ember is going to be less likely to gank me. He'll even have less rune control as a re result of him losing the lane. So that's one factor. Is Ember a hero that ganks Medusa? A little bit. A little bit, right? So that's something I have to I have to keep in mind. Is Monkey King a hero that, a hero that ganks Medusa? A little bit. Nyx? Not really. Mataburn, if he takes it, is okay, so he does have it, so he could help out a little bit, but it's a pretty low damage hero. Earth Spirit, low damage early game. Dark Seer with Earth Spirit's okay, but it's not the best if I have Stone Gaze available. There's no way they'll be able to burst me in time. Now, as a result, I know for a fact, based on these factors and my intuition, I can play up. And so every single game, when you're determining whether or not you need to leave, leave the lane, you have to be able to, and this is why it's such a hard game, but you have to be able to look at the matchups and, and just get these vibes, right? If you don't have these vibes, well, you got to play the game more and you got to go get a game leap sub. You know, that's the only two ways to improve. Now, of course, there's a point in every game where I'm going to generally just leave the lane to flash farm. You can see once again, I'm continuing to play very, very up here. And it's for the reasons that I stated before. I'm not afraid of ganks. I have vision on the majority of the enemy team's heroes. That's obviously the third factor here. Vision. Okay. Do you see them? Do you not? That's one of those things where it's just practice. Do you see them or do you not? Guys, the amount of times people die to ganks that they can literally see coming is, is disturbing. People be like, why didn't you call mid missing when you could have literally watched mid walk from the rune to you? Like, you'll have a rune ward and you'll see them coming. Well, if you're looking at the map <laughs> and you, you'll still die to it. And then people will be like, oh, call missing. It's like, bruh, you didn't need them to call missing. You need to turn on your eyes. Okay, getting towards the 12 minute mark here. I almost have my Manta already, which is it's a pretty disturbing Manta timing, but there's a lot of factors that comes into my next set of rotations throughout this game, which I'd like to explain to you guys. So the first one is I actually go full-time jungle here. Reason for that is I looked at the clock. I'm like, okay, 1137. I don't want to go back to bottom and I'm about to get my Manta and I can stack two camps. And as a result, I'm like, okay, you know, considering I can stack two camps on Radiant as Medusa, I really do not want to just go bottom and, and go hit a tower, right? Maybe if I could kill the tower, it'd be okay. And I think in this situation, I probably could have. But either way, this is going to be a good way for me to just get my farm up, get my Manta in a safe area, which is really, really nice. However, after this is the next interesting point of in the game. So I have my Manta, and a big part of Dota is when you get Manta on any of these ranged heroes, you generally want to play mid, because you can push out the mid lane, which is often a dangerous lane to push out. You can push out the mid lane very easily, and after you do that, you can farm the triangle. And that's like generally the most efficient thing to do at this point in the game. Right, it's like it's just so efficient for Medusa. Once you hit this, like yeah, obviously timing where you can kill ancients. If you do it earlier than when you can kill ancients, being mid and in the tri camp is actually just a waste of time. It's just bad. Um, but I go bottom. Why do I go bottom here? I go bottom here because I have an SF on my team. As a result, do you think SF wants to just roam? No, that's not what SF does. SF's a farming mid. So if I go mid, I'm gonna grief him, right? Because the thing is, let's say SF TP's bottom, right? What happens to his game? Think about this. 
What happens to his game? He's stuck bottom. He can't make plays. He can't go mid. He can't fight mid. He can't pressure mid tower. They can just avoid him, right? If he's a threat, which he absolutely is. But they can just avoid him for the next 40 seconds. Sure, he has bots, which makes it not nearly as bad, but it's still bad. A 40 second clock where he can't be anywhere. He can't respond to dives. And being bottom in general is just not that great for SF. It's an area where you could absolutely get ganked. I am significantly harder to gank than SF at this point in the game. And once again, you'll notice me not grouping up and me not being afraid to play the side lanes allows me to not only continue to flash farm, but also just kick a Monkey King out of the lane. I deny his wave and I bully him out again. However, while I do all of this, once again, now we're gonna be putting all the factors together. Can they gank me at this point of the game? Absolutely. It's at the point of the game where if they just put two shells on an Earth Spirit and they combine that with a Monkey King ulti, they probably could kill me. But I see multiple heroes top. Once I see those heroes top, I'm going to push out on the wave and look to bully the Monkey King again. The only reason why I can do this, even though this matchup isn't theoretically that favorable, is because I am four levels ahead with probably like a 4k net worth advantage. Yeah, <laughs> this guy even ends up manning up to me. It's pretty funny. So I turn on the stone gaze late. But either way, even though I end up making this psycho play, you can imagine how this was good for my Shadow Fiend. I allow him to stay in the mid lane, a very safe portion of the map for him at this point in the game. And I, I, you know, I go bottom and I take the bottom farm. We split the farm three ways. Even when he picked SF, I was kind of like, oh my God, this guy picked SF with Dusa, which is generally a kind of a questionable thing to do because SF doesn't really create space. And so if SF doesn't win his lane and you have a Medusa SF, you're probably going to lose the game. There's not going to be enough space on the map, especially at, at the level I'm playing at. But he won his lane, so thank God. And finally, at 1430 is the first time I go mid this game. I would argue that maybe I could have gone mid a little bit earlier to secure the mid tower with my team, but based on how the game state was, SF was farming, Kunko was farming, I was farming, and I never felt like I had to get ganked, I didn't have to leave the lane. But hopefully you can kind of see how a lot of factors come into play when it comes to like whether or not you should stay in your lane. But if you have the opportunity to split the map, that's how you're going to create the biggest net worth advantage in Dota in almost every single match. Also, always remember you can TP into engagements if you really need to. All right, and this right here is why item timings are very important. If you manage to win your lane and shut down the enemy team, as well as hit stupid good timings because you flash farm everything in the area, you absolutely annihilate the enemy team. My BKB really came into play here. No stuns come out. The enemy team has a lot of kite, a lot of stuns, a lot of disables. Completely ignore them in this team fight kill the Monkey King and his ulti, and I almost got a Rampage. My freaking SF did This guy picks SF and just griefs me. Oh my. <laughs> dude, you can see I was typing in chat, you know, just, just gotta let him know. Come on, come on, come on, man. <laughs> but nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And just as a brief summary, remember, the few things you need to do when it comes to deciding whether or not you should stay in your lane is number one, think about your matchups, right? Do the heroes in the game threaten me? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. For instance, if you're playing Jug and Life Stealer and the enemy team has no BKB piercing disables, odds are you shouldn't leave your lane and you should be flash farming everything as much as you can. And you should largely be playing up far into the waves, cutting waves and so on. The next thing is of course, vision, right? Vision, do you see the enemy team? And then the third one, which I covered first is advantages and disadvantages. Did you win your lane or did you not win your lane? In this match in specific, I absolutely won my lane. That allows me to get an early treads, an early wand, and eventually an early manta. And every single one of these timings was absolutely massive this game. They allowed me to bully out the Darkseer and use my DPS advantage to simply kick him out. And you can see all throughout the game, man, these items, they just pay off. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, dude. They tried to man up to me. I just literally killed them all with just, just a couple autos. I didn't even have mana. But all right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.